Hello everyone. So we are going to continue our odyssey through A-level biology. Today we are going to follow up our discussion on microscopes and the different types of microscopes and the different types of images that they can produce. And now we are going to look at biological drawing. Okay, so let's proceed. First thing we are going to do is just go through the general rules, just remind ourselves um, of what are the things we should be doing, including procedures we should be following when doing biological drawing. And then we'll follow that up by some examples of biological drawing. We'll look at things that you can see with your eyes, for example, dissecting a heart and drawing that. We'll also be looking at microscope drawings, high power and low power. So let us begin. We are going to begin with why, what's the point of biological drawing? In this age of digital cameras and uh, you know the electronic age where we can um, take images easily in various different kinds of ways, why are we still um, obsessing about biological drawing? And in many ways, those arguments are valid, and I gotta say, um, I'm in that boat, uh, sort of, um, where, yeah, you, I do have to question sometimes why are we still persisting with teaching this? Why is this still on the specification in this age of digital imagery and all this technology and microscopes that we have access to? Why are we still persisting with biological drawing? It's a valid question. So I thought I'd address this with this first slide. And here I present some arguments which, which I think justifies um, why we spend some time on this. And why not only why we should do it as a point of it's on the specification, but also from the point of view that this is actually something that has value. Okay, as a biologist, as someone um, who, for whom th this is not my favourite thing, it is still of importance and value, and therefore I will spend time teaching it. Okay, so first point. As a bi when you're doing biological drawing, you are, because you're drawing it, you're just paying a, a bit more attention to the details. Okay, and as a result of that, you might uh, glean some, science, uh, some biologically relevant structural information that then you can relate to function. And building on from what we said in last uh, lesson or last episode um, is that structure, as a biologist, structure and the relationship of structure to function is, is really the core of what biology is all about. And so anything that gives you a better idea of structural information is important. Okay, so if you're doing drawing, um, in order to reproduce it accurately, that means you are paying more attention to the subject of your observation, and therefore, it that is a valuable experience, uh, a valuable part of the process. Secondly, you record scientifically important information. So this is just like um, recording any results that you might be doing, for example, an experiment on enzymes. You might be doing an experiment on color changes with biological molecules. You could be doing an experiment measuring reaction times um, in response to stimuli of an organism. All of those things require recording of results. And in uh, another way, biological drawing is just another way of recording information. Okay, and how, however good um, artificial intelligence has become, um, it probably still doesn't uh, beat the intelligence of the human being in terms of discerning what is relevant information from what might not be relevant for the purpose that you are trying to achieve. Okay, so from that point of view, technology even hasn't got to the stage where it could reproduce what a human could do in terms of discriminating between relevant information and non-relevant information um, so that is still, um, that is another reason why biological drawing is still an important skill. Number three, and this is the most important thing for me, is that this is you 
biological drawing demonstrates that you have an inherent understanding and knowledge of the structures that you are looking at. So when you are drawing something, you are not only, and I know this disagrees with what OCR might say in, in, their, in their guidance on biological drawing, but I do believe that when you are drawing something that you are seeing, it is not only your responsibility to draw what you see, but it's, it's for you to draw what you see in the light of, or through the lens of, the knowledge of the structure that you already have. So you know what the structure of a leaf should be so that when you look down the microscope at what um, actual leaf tissue looks like, when you look down that microscope and see that, you're, you're kind of looking for certain structures already. Um, it's not just you doing an accurate reproduction of what you see, it's you at the same time as doing that, you're also applying what you know about the structures that you expect to see. So I'm going to disagree with OCR a bit on, on that point, because f from experience, you can't really do a good biological drawing without having knowledge of what you're drawing beforehand. And I know that goes a little bit against what the pioneers of this field were doing, because they were just accurately reproducing what they saw, and then they were determining what that meant functionally. Um, but you know, this is A-levels, it's not uh, the cutting edge of biological research. So what we are doing is we are, through biological drawing, we are applying our pre-existing understanding and knowledge of these um, tissues, cells, structures. And so we are applying that, and that's what the third point is, that you, the, that biological drawing is a way for you to apply your knowledge and understanding of biology.